Welcome back to part three of the video. Um, in this step, we're going to create an animation. But first, we need to create a ground for our assembly. So let's insert component, new part. Click on the screen. And then you want to edit the part. Click on sketch. And then let's do top plane. Then let's draw a rectangle. Select features, extrude base. Let's make our ground three inches thick. And then an exit uh, edit component. And then let's uh, give this ground an appearance. So appearances, click on this one. And we want to choose stone, paving, asphalt. Let's decrease the mapping size. Click OK. That is our ground. So we need just we just need to bring this back up. Or bring the model down. And that is our ground. The next thing we're going to do is actually make the gears work. So right now, if we move the gears, it's not connected to anything. So when I move this gear, the whole crankshaft should move. So what we're going to do is create a sub assembly. A sub assembly is basically a rigid body in this sense. So this will be part of the sub assembly. This will be part of it. The whole crankshaft and the cranks will be. So it'll be rotating as one rigid body. So to create a rigid body, we want to create a sub assembly. So to do that, we select all the parts that we want to create into a sub assembly and then right click on the tree and um, click form sub assembly. So a good way to do this um, is to hide all the parts you want to form a sub assembly to, and then select all the hidden parts, then right click form sub assembly. So let's hide the parts we want to create into a sub assembly. Just hover over a part and press tab to hide a part. So we want all the parts that are connected to the crankshaft. So that crankshaft becomes one whole rotating body. And then in your tree, just um, select all the parts we have hidden. And then right click, form new sub assembly. And if there's a pop up that says move, click move. So now this, um, oh, and one more thing you want to unhide the parts. So our new sub assembly is right here. So 
so now when we rotate this gear, the whole um, crankshaft rotates. So it's all connected as if it's one rigid body. So the last thing we're going to do before I move on to motion study is to make sure there's a gear mate. So when we rotate this gear, um, it translates to this gear as well. So do that. Let's, um, let's hide this space first. And then let's line this up properly. After it's lined up properly and not um, interfering with one another, we want to go to mate, mechanical mates, gear, and then you want to select this edge on one of the gears and this edge on the other gear. Just want to make sure these ratios are one to one. Click OK. So now what's going to happen is when you rotate this gear, the other gear rotates. Now you want to click save. Save eternally. Internally. Let's unhide that, um, that base. So now when you rotate your, when the motor rotates, the gear and the crankshaft rotates. But right now you want to make sure that everything is floating except for the base, uh, for the ground. So if you look at your tree, it's all these uh, minus signs. Make sure the only um, F you see is the ground. So right now it looks like I have basis F. So you want to float the base. So it should be floating and the ground should be fixed. Now we can um, create a new motion study. So to do that, I want to go to assembly new motion study. And then you want to uh, click motions analysis. If you don't have this, uh, just have to enable it. Let's go to tools, add-ins, uh, SolidWorx motion. Make sure you check this. So now we want to add gravity, y-axis, make sure it's pointing down. We want to create a contact, use contact groups. So um, you want the ground to be one contact group and the other are the things that will touch the ground. You don't need to do the whole body, just do the ones that are, that are contacting the ground. So the wheels and the legs. Let's just use steel dry for now. Click OK. So next we want to add our motor. So just right click on this gear. I mean this um, left click on this face on the gear. You can see the arrow is pointing in the counterclockwise position. Set it as 50 RPM or faster or slower. And right now, all you got to do is calculate. It, if you want to speed up your calculation and you don't want to see what's happening on the screen, uh, uncheck animate during simulation. This will speed up your calculation by about two to three times, but you just can't see it on the screen. So let me show you what that, what that means. So when I click calculate now, it 
you can see the walker moving on the screen, but the calculation is really slow. So if I um, uncheck animate during sim simulation, it will speed things up. So now if I click calculate, we can't see any animation here, but it will be really fast. So it's calculating much faster than before. So just drag this to about 30 seconds. Um, click calculate, let it calculate all the way to 30 seconds. And then after that, you want to do your different orientations and camera view. So let's say at 10 seconds, you want a specific view. So you would um, drag this horizontal bar to 10 seconds. And then you would right click, place key. So you see this white bar, that means the animation, I mean, the camera view is working. You can also use um, camera. It's the same thing, but you want to right click or orientation and camera view. Then you want to click disable view key creation. And then you want to click camera view. This is just another method of doing camera angles. It's up to you to uh, to decide which one you want to use. So after you created your uh, your motion analysis, you finish calculating the uh, the motor, the everything, how it moves, and also the camera angles and everything. You want to save animation, save it as MP4. Make sure the aspect ratio is 16 by 9 and at least 30 seconds, uh, 30 frames per second. 60 is better, but 30 frames uh, per second will, will do. And then click save. Just make sure your animation is within the 16 by 9 window. I personally like using the camera method here. It's a bit more complicated, but you get more freedom to adjust your camera angles. And it's the same thing. You would, instead of um, right clicking here and place key, you would have right clicked the camera and click properties. So what that means is, so let's say at zero seconds, I want a certain camera view. So click properties and let's say I want it here. Make sure it's 16 by nine. So the benefit of using a camera is you can also see your viewfinder. So your object won't go out of view. And then at maybe six seconds, you want another angle again, properties. And then maybe you want to move it here. So now you have the same thing, but just a different way of doing it. And then here it's the same thing and before, and then you can use camera aspect ratio and then 30 frames for uh, 30 frames per second or more. And that's it. That's, uh, that concludes the motion study part of this video. So part four of the um, tutorial is optional. And it's only if you run into errors or redundancy problems while calculating your motion analysis. But in the future, as your models get more and more complicated with a four-legged 
walkers or more parts um it'll be helpful to see part four because that is where we're gonna create more sub assemblies to uh reduce the number of redundancies right here so we run into less errors so i hope this video has been helpful and um we look forward to all your awesome designs.